Hello guys, Nigel here, Nigel's Modelling Bench, and here we go with part 27 of the um, RC Sherman tank build. Uh, before we get going, don't forget to hit that like button, and also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed, we're on 8,500 now, which is uh, more than I ever dreamed of, to be honest. So, um, yeah, looking forward to the 50,000 now, <laughs> just joking. So, um, what we're going to look at today is texturing, and... Uh, basically giving the the turret and the mantlet some cast texture the kit has a kind of representation of cast texture but it's not for my eyes it's not nearly enough and particularly i mean remember this is a 1974 kit i believe i'm sure it was 1974 what's it saying here 1974 so um so basically, I mean, mould restrictions and that, you know, they didn't use slide moulding and stuff in those days. So the sides are completely smooth and it'll probably have some draft on it so that it would come out of the mould. So, uh, yeah, we're going to add some texture to it. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of doing it or a couple of different ways that I do it. I've seen other people on YouTube do this and I've seen other people do this all over the place in, in different ways. I basically use two methods or three methods. One... You could just use Tamiya Extra Thin. Now for a small area like the mantlet, you could come in with your Extra Thin like this. Okay, and we'll just do it on this corner. And what we can do is just wet the plastic. Okay, and we can see that once it starts attacking it, we can use the brush to give it a textured look. All right. Now, if you keep going, you get finer and finer so on a sort of on a, on a 70 second scale kit if you keep going you will get a very very fine let me bring the camera in so you can see but you will get a very very fine the, the more you do it the finer it gets now if you if you're worried about ruining your model you could try it on the back or try it on a, a piece of flat sprue do it on the inside of your hull on the inside of the turret and you can just basically keep going and you can see the more I use the brush, and it's not ruining the brush or anything, I'm just pushing, I'm not end on, I'm on the side. And you can see the more and more I go, the coarse, the, the, the finer and finer it gets. So now we've got a sort of very fine cast texture on there, which would be great for 35th scale. So you can keep going. There you go, and you can get it finer and finer and finer. Okay, so that's one method. The other thing you could do then is put your finger on it, and you can get it really fine. So there's a really fine cast texture on there now. So that would be great for like 76 scale or something. Okay, um, the other method is to use Mr. Surfacer. Now, this is probably the most expensive method because Mr. Surfacer isn't cheap. You need an old brush for this. Don't use one of your best brushes. And what I've got here is some 1000, which has started to go slightly thick. So I've got my 1000 here. So I'm going to just brush this on quite heavily in this area here, making sure I go around the edges and everything. You know, the cast texture wasn't only refined to the top, it would have gone around the sides and everything. So, get all around the edges. Okay, and just leave that on there for a few minutes. Okay, so that's been on there for a few minutes now. So I can come along with the brush and I can work it out. And as you can see, I probably left it a little bit long. But what I can do is stipple away at it and get a fairly fine cast look. Pick that up in the light. Okay, now I left it too long on purpose because what I can do now, I've got a jar here with some um, Mr. Color leveling thinners. You could use ordinary Mr. Color thinners. You could use any of your, um, you know, your, your sort of hot acrylic thinners, if you like. And I could just brush this on here and revitalize it and it's straight back to being Mr. Surfacer again and now I can work at it now and get the kind of effect I'm looking for so 
you can see we've got a much coarser texture to that now. And I think I'm going to go with that. So what I can do now is come along, brush some more of this on. We'll go over that bit I did with glue. Brush it into there. Now we need to be careful around things like these screws because they wouldn't have a cast texture on them. And also let me make sure we don't get the end of that. I believe that's a sight. Or is it a, I'm not sure if it's a sight or if it's a machine gun that stays with the, is it called coaxial machine gun? It stays with the, um, with the main barrel. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we don't get anything on those screw heads. And of course, the other beauty of this over using glue is if you do get it anywhere you don't want it, you can just come along afterwards with your with your um, leveling thinners or Mr. Cutter thinners or whatever thinners you use and just wash it away as I will show you. So what I'll do is I'll paint over these numbers There we go, I should blush, brush plenty on there like that go just like that And then once again, we can leave that for a few minutes. I'm going to go around the front edge here. And I'm going to try and find something I can stick this on. So that I don't have to hold it. All right, this has been only a few minutes now, so we can start to work on it. <clears throat> As you can see, I've got my thinners here and more Mr. Surfacer should I need. So I'm just going to wet the brush with Mr. Surfacer and then we can start to work on it what i've done i brought the camera in so i really must go and get this new camera mustn't i guys <laughs> a lot of you have given me a lot of money to go and buy a camera with and i've still got it just sat in the account and then we can get some better videos out for you so all i'm doing is just wetting it all down As you can see, we can just stipple away at it and what it will do, because I'm keeping it wet, it will kind of level itself out almost and it gives us that sort of textured look that we're looking for at this scale. Now, as I said before, if it was 35th scale, I would work at it more to get it finer. Okay, it doesn't need to be perfectly even. Sorry about the, <laughs> the noise, guys. I got out of the window because this, all of this stuff stinks. So uh, make sure I don't um, kill myself with the fumes, although some of you I'm sure would like that to happen. Some of the comments I've been getting lately, it's like um, proper, proper hate mail. It's ridiculous. But, you know, hey-ho. So, here we go. If you haven't already had a look, go over to my um, Land Rover channel and uh, have a look on there. I'm currently um, cutting the rear cross member about on the chassis to get it straight because when Land Rover built the built the chassis or GKM built the chassis, they they managed to build in a great big banana shaped rear cross member. If you look at any modern Land Rover Defender, not the new new shape, the you know the later up to 2016. If you look at those, the um, the rear cross member always bows in at the ends. So I've decided to straighten mine out. And uh, those of you that enjoy working with plastic card and scratch building and stuff like that, you'll really enjoy it. You know, set into a 
perfectly good Land Rover chassis with a with a, a cutting disc, and then what Mig Wilder is uh, fun, <laughs> great fun. So there we go. Just keep working at that. Get it nice and coarse and stipply. And I know this is like watching paint dry, dry guys, but you can always fast forward. Um, because there are those that really want to see it, how it happens, not just like a lot of people. So put the Mr. Servicer on, Doomph, there you go, it's done. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I want to show you how I do it. Now, as you can see, it's starting to dry out. So as I, as I go over it now, I will get this very fine stippled effect. And if you keep going, you'll start to lift it off. You can see it's starting to lift away there. Okay, what you need to do then is get some thinners. Just brush it into those areas. And you're away. Okay, up here, it's a little bit too dry. It's a bit too fine. I'm just going to dot some thinners around on it and then go back over it again. And then once again, I can get the... The kind of finish that I'm after. And obviously with this being a 16th scale model everything is massive. And there we go. So there is our cast texture effect. If any areas that are a bit too shiny, you can see in the light, I just go over them. Like so. Okay, so looking at the, um, the third method. So we've looked at using <clears throat> Tamiya Extra Thin, like this. We've looked at using Mr. Surfacer which is this one here, Mr. Surface 1000. And I'm gonna look at using Sprugo. If you don't know what Sprugo is, basically old Tamiya Extra Thin Bottle, when you've got a bit of glue left in there, put some of your styrene sheet, there's a pot here of scrap bits of styrene. Use this, don't use Sprue. Um, you, you can use Sprue, but I find that the styrene sheet works much better. There's something that Phil Flory does and and and, this is one time I do agree with him. I, I believe it's it's correct. You use the styrene sheet; it's better than sprue, unless of course you're working on a particularly weird plastic. Like Airfix plastic is very very soft, so I would tend to use Airfix plastic for the sprue goo. Um, HK models plastic is very very hard, so I would tend to use the HK models plastic for the sprue goo. So because if, if you if you put a particularly soft sprue goo into a hard plastic, when you sand down you'll end up with a divot and if you use a hard sprue goo on a soft plastic when you sand you end up with a you know the hard bit will be raised and the soft bit will be lower it's like trying to sand super glue on soft plastic it doesn't work so what we're going to do what I've done here you, know, you can see I've gone around and roughly with 100 grit just gone around and blended all this in when we did this in the last one that was about a week ago so that's all nice and settled down now I know we're going to not going to get any more pulling back so we're just going to take a nice healthy dob of uh, Mr. Mr. Surfacer of sprue goo and just brush it in around here. Okay, and for now I'm going to stay off that hatch. And I'm only going to be able to do a small amount of this. I'm going to have to make some more sprue goo, so I'll be finishing this off camera. But I'm going to show you the effect that we can get around here. So I'm going to use a paintbrush because the brush in the Tamiya lid isn't long. Yes, I know I can extend the bristles. Thank you. Every time I mention that I can't get the glue out of the pot, I get 
Did you know you can actually extend the bridge? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so. Just going to brush on a small area here. And then we can work at it. And I've also got to do some work around here. Now I've, I've seen differing pictures of different sort of seams and stuff. I don't know if it's a a weld seam where the hull was cast in two parts and then welded together or if it's where the two sand casting um molds if you like were um were brought together but uh, i need to do some work in that area so i'll do that after we've done this so there we go i've got a decent area there now um don't worry about it letting it dry it won't dry it, it takes forever to dry so we can go over it now like this and we can just stipple it the same as we did with the Mr. Servicer. But as you can see, it's kind of a lot more sticky. Um, it tends to come up with the brush a lot more. Don't worry about that. We're just going to keep going. I'm going to get this, this sticky, stippled, horrible looking mess. Now, if you really want to go for a very rough texture, then you might want to leave it at this. Personally, I wouldn't, no way. And you can see the more you go, the more it pulls about and it becomes almost like, like a skin that's pulling away. Okay. See, if I keep going, I can literally pull it off with the brush. All right. Don't worry about the hairs and the strands and everything. They can all be done later. So we've got that really, really rough texture, which might be good if you're trying to depict burnt flesh on a monster or something. Okay, so we've got this really, really ripped up surface. Now you can go with your finger. You can push it down a bit. Okay. The other thing you can do. Come along with this hammy extra thin. Remember, plenty of ventilation. This this all smells. It's all bad for you. Okay, tammy extra thin on the brush. I'm just going to brush that over. You can see that immediately it starts to settle it down. And just keep brushing it and the more you brush it the smoother it will become you can see what that particularly thick ledge there I could just work at that it'll be gone in a second Okay, so as you can see, this isn't as forgiving as using Mr. Surfacer because you can't kind of go back on it. Um, with the Mr. Surfacer, you could, you could completely take it off if you want, but with the sprue goo, you're kind of attacking the surface, so it's keyed in. It's going to become part of the model, so if you're bashing it about and knocking it about. But there you go, you can see we've got a, a cast texture on there now, which is fairly rough. Now, what you can do with this, if you want to take it back, you could come along with a um, sanding stick once it's dry and, and sand it down and then go over with uh, some extra thin again. Or you could just leave it like that. And as you can see, we've got a, a fairly rough 
texture on there. And then I can go over with my finger, push it down, get rid of the lumps, lumps and bumps. Okay, add a bit of contrast. What we'll do, we'll get some Mr. Surfacer 1000. No, it's the same brush. I'm not messing around changing brushes and stuff. And we'll brush some of this onto the onto the hatch. Like so. Put some more on there. Slap it on, as Ted says. There we go. So we'll let that go off for a minute or so and then we'll work at that. Oh, the other thing we could do, if we don't like the finish on this, paint Mr. Servicer on it. Just like so. And then we can work at that. Add a bit of extra thin. Yep, that's extra thin I'm using, not thinners. So you've got all kinds of gunk building up on the brush now, so we remove that. As you can see, you can just do whatever you want. If you're having one of those days where you don't feel like doing anything precise, like you, you're not in the mood for putting your photo wedge in your cockpit, just uh, get one of your tank kits out and have a play with this and get your textured effect. Now that you see, I think is a bit too rough. That's a bit too much. I don't want that. I, want, I don't want it to be that rough. I'm going to put some more Mr. Surfacer on here. Let it go off. Okay, so I'm gonna let all that go off a bit and then I'm gonna play with it some more. Right, so been away for a little while and there we go. I've basically gone over the whole thing with some sprue goo and given it a, a sort of rough appearance. Now this area here um, particularly down here I'm a little bit sort of it's a bit too much so I'm going to use one of these old floury sanding sticks it's an old one that's kind of worn out because it's probably going to clog up because I haven't let this dry for long enough but basically what I can do now is just take away the roughness in this area now this is probably half an hour since I've done this so you know it doesn't you don't have to hang around for days or anything it's not like when you're working with aircraft on fuselage seams and stuff you're not really worried about it shrinking back and you know if it doesn't stay flat because it's not flat to start with so you can see there that i can just rub over that and get rid of some of the roughness in that area now if i want to go with something even coarser let's get the let's get an old blue one this is an old blue stick there we go. I can go over there like that. And there we are. That's that all uh, dealt with. Just like so. And there we are. So basically, you can do with this what you want. Now, if I wanted to smooth out a bit more, I could put some Mr. Surfacer on there and just let it lie. So we can get some Mr. Servicer 1000. And I'll show you what I mean. And we can just basically brush this on. In fact, I'll get my thinners open just in case I need to go over it with some thinners to really take it down. Okay, so we can come along now and just brush this on. This brush has been affected by the uh, the glue. So we're just brushing that on, we're not trying to stipple it or anything. And then if I take some thinners, I'll just wet it down. You 
you can see it has a kind of a kind of leveling effect it's just softening it up so as you can see that yeah you can do whatever you want with this now this brush is no good because it's full of um extra thin so i'm just gonna something you don't want to do at home kids i'm just gonna clean it off in some extra thin and then get it straight into the Go, it's soft again now. So we can wipe that off, get it into the thinners, and that's how you revitalize your brush. So that was all clogged up with extra thin, and now it's not. So, um, yeah, we can take some more thinners now and just go over this if you want to, and just get rid of any lumps or anything, and just smooth it out. Now, that hatch, I want to give it a bit more so I can just wet that again, revitalize it. And there we go. So that's basically how we do the textured finish. Now, what I'm gonna do now is a very short, I say very short, a shortish tutorial on how to make sprue goo, and then we'll come back to this. Now this, Tutorial on Sprugo I'm going to use in another video I've got coming up. So the tone will kind of change and it's going to go very much back to the sign of, you know, you've never made a model in your life. Okay, so I've done videos on this before and um, been very, very well accepted and uh, appreciated. So I'm going to do another one again now. This is for the uh, newer modelers out there, for the beginners. Um, and this is how we're going to make Sprugo. Now I've talked about Sprugo. This is my sprue glue that I use, and this is basically made with glue and styrene. But you can see it's got like a brown colour to it. I added some, I just added a drop of acrylic paint just to give it some colour because when you're working with white plastic, if you've got white sprue glue, it's difficult to see exactly where it's gone. So I've put I've, I've put a little bit of dye in there that just gives it a bit of colour, but you don't need to do that. So to do this, we need a liquid cement. And I'm going to start with Tamiya Extra Thin. Now this is the go-to cement. If you don't already use this, I suggest you get yourself some if you're into your modelling. It's probably the best modelling cement out there, in, in my opinion. Um, others will say MEK is better or whatever, but this I think is awesome. They also do a, here's a, I usually have these in this dispenser here. This is from Premium Hobbies, this company here down in Weston. Um, and it's, it holds three bottles of... Um, of Tamiya glue. So we've got the extra thin quick setting. You can see it's like a lime green rather than the green there. And this one is a very, very hot cement. It dries practically instantly. So it's great for, you know, attaching small parts and stuff. But the trouble is if you, if you apply it to your part um, straight away, like so, it will just dry. It just evaporates and dries straight away. You see that's going gone. Okay, so you know, it's really only really suitable for when you're, um, you know, hold a small part in place, dab the glue on, let it capillary, and then to take your hand away. That's what it's good for. Whereas this one will, will stay wet a lot longer. Anyway, I digress. So we take some of our Tamiya Extra Thin and an old Tamiya Extra Thin bottle or any resealable bottle. We've got some here I've made using a Tamiya paint pot. This is actually for a, um, a project I've got on the go, which is made of ABS. So this is an ABS sprue goo oh, stinks um made up with abs glue so it's the black plastic that the kit came in and you, so you can you use a tamiya pot and it will stay fine but best to use the um the old older tamiya glue pot because you've got the integral brush so all we need to do is pour some of this into there now it can be poured i'm going to use a pipette because you can guarantee because the camera's on it'll go everywhere so I'm just going to use a pipette, put some glue in here. Okay, there we go. Now, put the lid back on that one. Okay, so you can see here, I'll put the lid back on. I've got this, I've got about, I don't know, eight millimetres in the bottom of there. Nothing, nothing much at all, really. So, what you can do then, although it's called sprue goo, you can use model sprue and a lot of people do I tend to use the white styrene now this is basically you can buy strips of styrene sheets of styrene um, it's basically plastruct or evergreen 
and it is pure styrene. Now, model kits have all sorts of different additives in them and different sprue reacts in different ways to this. And what I found in my experience is they generally shrink back a lot. So you, you put some on and they just shrink back to practically nothing. Whereas with this, if you use this, you know where you are, you're stable all the time. It's the same as, you know, if you were soldering something and somebody kept giving you different solders, you have it to keep relearning. If you stick with this, you know what you've got, you know what you're going to get. And every time you pick it up, you know what it's going to work like. So I would suggest using this other than when you've got really, really hard plastic, really, really soft plastic, then it might be an idea to make it with the sprue. So I've got these little bits of scrap in here. I keep all the scraps and everything for this. So basically, I'm just going to pour this out on the bench and then take some smallest pieces. The smaller they are, the better, the quicker they'll dissolve. So all we do is put these little bits of plastic in here and they will dissolve. Now, anything that's a bit chunky like that, you can just come along with an old pair of cutters and cut it or mark it. And then you can break it into smaller pieces. The trouble is, if you put great big pieces like this in, it will take forever to dissolve. OK, so, um, you know, keep it small. The smaller the better because we've got these tiny little bit of pieces that we're never going to really use for anything anyway. Um, but I always keep these bits of plastic that I've cut off because, you know, if you're just making a little, like you just want to put a little wedge into a corner to something in a, in a nose gear bay just to make it a bit stronger, you know, a little piece like that, absolutely fine. Cut that into a into a diagonal, make a little buttress from that, absolutely fine. So we're just going to add the the sprue in here or the sprue. The, uh, the styrene sheet, just add it in there, put all these tiny bits in and they will all dissolve down. And basically consistency wise, we'll just leave that like that for now. We'll put the brush back in. You can see that in there and just give it a shake so it's all wet and that will start to dissolve and you will end up with something like this. Now, what I tend to work with is you want it to just not string. So this is about right. You see, when I pull this out, it doesn't string. If, if when you pull the brush out, it strings all the way out, then it's a little bit too thick. So just thin it down and touch. You can add some glue to thin it down. You can add some plastic to thicken it up. But we can see in here that already that glue is starting to turn white where the sprue is the um, the plastic and the styrene is all sort of melted together now into one lump, as you can see, it won't rattle around and shake about. So um, that's basically how you make sprue goo. OK, so now we're back to uh, back to normal. Um, I'm going to be doing a, a little beginner's video series uh, very soon, and I thought that's one of the videos I can use in it. Say we do it again, because obviously when you make sprue goo, you need a pot, you need the sprue and if I did it three or four times, I'd end up with a mountain of sprugo everywhere. So there we go. So um, basically, that's how you make sprugo. Now, as you can see, this is a bit I sanded down, and now that's dried. Literally ten minutes is pretty much like for how long as I took to make that video. It's about as long as we've been. So you can see we've got these little bits of stringiness here. We can just rub them away, and then what I'm going to do now is just go back with Mr. Surfacer and. Do my thing again and i won't bore you with uh watching the whole of this but basically see i'm just going to go around this area here being careful not to um not to encroach or encroach onto any fabricated parts rather than you know what we don't want to do is put a cast texture on the fabricated parts The dog is shifting around for some reason, as if you hear her wandering about underneath me. She's in and out under the bench, she's got something. What's that, Jess? Oh, big yawn. Yeah. So there we go. <laughs> First time she's ever done this while I'm videoing. I think she wants to go out. So, um,. So there we go, guys. Look, get rid of that bloody lump keeps coming back. I'm just going to give that a bit of a stipple and then I'm going to go and let Jess out. So 
So there we go. So give this a go, whatever kit you've got. Even give it a go on an old kit, you know, for an old aircraft fuselage or something. It's quite satisfying and the, and the, the nice thing about it is, unlike so many things with modelling these days, there's no precision involved. There's no skill. It's, it's all experience, really. It's just, you know, there's no skill in just dabbing a paintbrush, but knowing when to start and when to stop is a good thing. Um, so I've shown you how you go too far and then how you can get it back if you do go too far. Uh, if you are very unsure of yourself or if it's an expensive model and you don't want to cock it up, don't use the sprue goo. Just stay with the Mr. Surfacer because the beauty of Mr. Surfacer is you can always take it off. You can come in with some Mr. Leveling Thinners on a rag and just wipe it all off. Whereas the sprue goo, that's on there for life now. That's that's it. It's on there. And then these hatches, these um, vents here. I've already put some Mr. Surfacer on them. I'm just going to put some more on it just to revitalise them. And then I can give them a a different kind of texture just to add some interest. Give them a kind of finer texture than we've got on the rest of the, the turret. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that. I think it's been quite a quick one. Now, something I do need to do is get rid of that. There's a You can see there's a string in there. And it's affecting the look of the, the cast texture. So I'm going to get rid of that. You can see I've just run across there with the knife and made a, you know, make a scratch in it. It doesn't matter. You can see, I scratch it when I want to. It doesn't matter because we can just rub it with a knife. Okay, and then we can come along. Like that. And go back with our textured effect. And there we are, job done. Okay, we're back. So um, Jess has been let out and uh, done her thing and now she's decided to start barking, so. If she barks, I'm sorry. So, as I said, with the Beauty Mr. Surfacer is, if you get it somewhere you don't want it, you can take it away. So I've got a fine brush here. I've got some of this leveling thinners here, which has got Mr. Surfacer in it. And basically, I can just come along here with this little brush and just paint over where the Mr. Surfacer is, where I don't want it. And as you can see, it will disappear. Okay, so that's it. It's just like using enamel thinners when you're doing your, your washes and stuff and getting the you're getting the washes out of where you don't want it to be. Same over here, go over this edge. Just like so. And it leaves a sort of grey stain behind, but it's so thin it won't show under the paint. Once it's got its final coat of paint, and if you want to sort of level it all out, you can just paint the whole thing so it's all grey, like that. So it's all got a bit of a finish to it. And then over here, there's a weld, which is going to go around a hinge. I'll leave that actually because that's probably going to have to be blended in once that uh, once that hatch is added. So basically there we go. Now I've got to look at doing something about welds around the base of these, these hooks. So we'll look at that. Um, but other than that, I think we can call that texturing done. Now over here you can see it's still a bit wet. I can touch it with my finger and give it a bit more of an effect if I want to. And then uh, once it's... Um, once it's painted, and we sort of give it a very light dry brush and a, and a green sort of filter wash or something, it'll really make that texture pop out. Um, I think it's a little bit over the top here still. I may do something with that, but um, I'm probably going to leave it. I've, I've seen Sherman turrets that are basically pretty much smooth, and I've seen them that are rough as anything. So 
you know it doesn't really matter you, you, you can do what you like and if the, the mat that's dry now take the mount off that drill put it on there we can see we've got a bit of a difference between the texture of the hull and the texture on the mount which is what we want but I notice we've got a brush bristle in there so we're going to scrape that out get rid of that bristle and then we can come along with our Mr. Surfacer and just brush over lightly and then just blend it all in like that. perhaps a bit of thinners get everything going again as I say that's the beauty of this process it's just you know it's, it's as rough as old boots you could just do what you want with it and if you don't use the sprue go you you really can't go wrong okay so I'm sorry if this has been a bit long and drawn out for you but we have to remember there's people watch this who've never even heard of doing this never even thought of doing it and will want to give it a go um, there's those of you that will probably say I'm doing it all wrong and yeah fine um, I've got the result I want so I'm not doing anything wrong as far as I'm concerned so um anyway thanks for watching um, that's been part 27 so part 20 I'll be with, I'll be sh up with you shortly and uh, I will move on and get this turret all built up with the gun barrel and everything in it thanks for watching I'll see you all soon bye for now